shout after our people and save our people. I turn the rostrum back over into the hand of one of the cables. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Let the church say amen one more time. Amen. Such a simple term, amen. But it has such a mighty and a powerful meaning. For amen means so be it. Amen means that God has fixed it and he is pleased with it. Amen means that every atom in the universe, every power and every force is already at work to make everything of good that is coming about as a result of this unity worship service between Ward African Methodist Church and Muhammad's Holy Temple of Islam, number 27, every power in the universe, amen means, is already working to help bring about the rise and resurrection of our people. Amen. To Pastor Frank Madison Reed III, my pastor, my friend, my comrade in the struggle, to his wife, Sister Marla Reed, to Attorney Cheka Abubakari, Reverend Moore, to this magnificent choir, to the steward board and stewardess board, the family and members of Ward African Methodist, and to you, my beloved and beautiful brothers and sisters. I am so honored to have these few precious moments with you to speak to you from my heart. For it is written that all we have to do is just stand in his name, open our mouths, and he will speak for us. So I have come to present myself to you as a living sacrifice unto him and then I pray to almighty God that he will use me during these few moments. Well. The base of my text comes from the book of Genesis. The 49th chapter starting with the 10th verse. Genesis the 49th chapter starting with the 10th verse. <clears throat> and it reads, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between her feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him will be the gathering of the people. Ride on, King Jesus, right on. The scepter, the symbol of authority, the symbol of rulership and power will not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver that is to be born from between her feet. None of this will take place until Shiloh comes and unto him will be the job, the monumental task of gathering the people together. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on. Shiloh is a name that I'm sure all of the elders in the church is well familiar with. Many of the youth may not be familiar with the name Shiloh, but Shiloh has a deep and a profound meaning and we will find that it is tied right in to the Jesus himself. Shiloh comes from a Hebrew root, Shalom, and it comes from an Arabic and an African root, Salam. So the book is saying that none of this will take place unless Shalom or unless Salam takes place. And we sing the song in the church, how beautiful are the feet 
of the one who brings glad tidings and good tidings of joy. Shiloh represents the one who brings good tidings. Shiloh represents the one who brings glad tidings. So it was fitting for Reverend Moore to read from Isaiah 61. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Glad tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the joy, the oil of joy for their mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the whole waste cities, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair those waste cities and the desolation of many generations. Many of us say that we know Shiloh. Many of us say we know Jesus. We say Jesus is my personal Savior. I'm all wrapped up in Jesus. But now the question that we must ask this morning, this Sunday morning church, is do we really know Jesus? For the book says that when Jesus would come, when Shiloh would come, that Shiloh in his return as the Christ would not return happy. Says there would be wailing and gnashing of teeth when they would hear the feet of Shiloh coming on the way. I wonder how many of us this morning are ready to hear the footsteps and the pitter-patter of the feet of Shiloh as Shiloh comes. I think we all need to ask ourselves this question. For the book teaches us that when Shiloh comes, as we just finished singing in the song, that when he comes, he will come with truth. He will come with a sword of truth. And there will be flashing of the lightning of his terrible swift sword. That when Shiloh comes, that Shiloh will be trampling out The vintage where the grapes of anger, where the grapes of wrath are stored. I wonder what made Shiloh angry. I wonder what is it that will make Shiloh come with a sword in his hand. Says that the lawgiver would come from between her feet. It must mean that the society or the world has gone or degenerated into a state of lawlessness. Interesting that we are in the weekend of Halloween. Oh, that's what I said. Amen, church. No, I don't think Halloween is cute. I don't think Halloween is great. Not to even mention the danger that we put our babies in participating in such foolishness. For every year, countless babies and children across this nation, especially black babies, especially brown babies, their lips, their tongues, their mouths are ripped and cut because vicious, wicked, cruel people put razor blades and oranges and razor blades and apples and lace the candy with poison and our black babies go from door to door. No, I don't think Halloween is cute. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now the question, the question is does Shiloh think Halloween is cute? You've got your lantern in the window. You've got your pumpkin with the light shining through the eyes and the nose and the mouth there on your mantle at home. But the question is, is Shiloh pleased? 
Are you in line with Shiloh's mind? That's the question. Is Jesus pleased? Halloween is an open day of the representation of a lawless society. Halloween is an open observance and a commemoration of a growing cult from the White House all the way down of a growing cult. All praise is due to Allah. <coughs> of a growing cult of devil worshippers, Satan worshippers. It's no wonder that our babies were killed in Atlanta, Georgia. I know, Mama. Because there are actually cults moving throughout America who are looking for blood. They drink blood. They kill and murder for the express purpose of draining blood from the body to drink blood. They openly worship Satan. They openly worship the devil. Don't just look at the punk rockers. The punk rockers are only a reflection. Halloween is a day of devil worship. It's a day where people worship and commemorate and talk about a hallowed evening where ghosts and spooks and all kinds of what the old folks call hates. You know what I'm talking about. Where the hates come out. The book says that when Shiloh comes, he would be responsible for the gathering of the people. And the root of the name Shiloh, which is applied to Jesus the Christ, is peace. But if Shiloh, if Jesus the Christ has to come and restore peace, the question is, who destroyed the peace? If Jesus is the peacemaker, who is the peacebreaker? If Jesus is the peacemaker, who is the troublemaker? Who is the troublemaker? Ask yourself that question. Who is the peace breaker? Who is it that has now landed 6,000 or more troops in Grenada? Who is the troublemaker? Who is the peacemaker? Shiloh is the peacemaker, but who is the peace breaker? Invaded the tiny island of Grenada. Not allowing the people the right to self-determination. The people of Grenada have as much, they have as much right to go through their own internal problems and changes and arrive at solutions as America did. Who is the troublemaker? Who is the peace breaker? That Shiloh must come and correct. The wrong that he has established. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between her feet, until Shiloh comes. And unto him will be the gathering of the people. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on. <clears throat> Who is it? That is the troublemaker and the peace breaker that went into the Republic of Iran in the early 50s and overthrew the legitimate government of Mohammed Mossadegh, killed thousands of the Iranian people, spilled their blood on the streets of Iran and put the Shah of Iran in power and a puppet government in power. Who is? the troublemaker who is the peacemaker that Shiloh must come and straighten out what he has messed up who's the troublemaker according to your bible 
who is that one who has destroyed the peace. We can't just go by the Bible. We have to go in it. We have to study the Bible. Paul admonishes us. Paul admonishes us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God. Workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. He says, endeavor to prove all things and hold fast to that which you find to be true and good. We must study this book, for we are in the book, and our condition is in the book from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation, we are in the book. The headlines of your newspapers are right in this book. The newsreel in the evening and at night is right in this Bible. The news report from the radio is right in this Bible. We're actually walking on the pages of the Bible right now. We're walking through the book right now. We have to understand what the book is talking about. Who is this troublemaker? Peace breaker. That Jesus the Christ Shiloh must come. And set in order what he has messed up. Overthrew the legitimate government of Mohammed Mossadegh. Put the Shah in power. Killed millions or thousands of the people in Iran. And then America controlled the Shah from remote control. Who is this troublemaker? Who is this peace breaker that went into Vietnam, dropped tons of napalm and bombs on men, women, and babies, children on a daily basis? Who is the peace breaker? Who is? The troublemaker that Shiloh has to come, church, and correct what he has made wrong. We have to ask ourselves this question today because if we don't know who the troublemaker is, we will go around saying, we. Have you heard black people say, we? <laughs> we landed in Grenada. We invaded Grenada. We have sent our army ranger force into Grenada. We have sent the army airborne units into Grenada. We have sent the Marine Corps into Grenada. I don't know if you really want to be included in that or not. I don't know if you really want to say we. I think you should reevaluate that. I think you should look at that a little differently. Was it really we? Or was it really he? Who was it that moved in? And drop the bomb on Japan. Drop the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Destroying countless lives of babies, children, men and women. Who dropped the bomb on Japan? Who is the troublemaker? Who is the peace breaker? That Shiloh must come and set in order a lawless society. Who is it that has freakishness, homosexuality, and licentiousness as the order of the day? Who is it? What land do people walk around with a broken hand? Who is the troublemaker? Getting so bad now until you can't tell Who's who? I didn't mean to say that. I didn't really mean to say that. Getting so bad today until you can't tell what's what.
can't tell who's who from what's what. Huh? The men dressing like the women and the women dressing. Don't you know, church, that in order to carry a saddle bag and qualify for carrying that bag, you got to have your horse somewhere. Where's your horse? Huh? Wearing pants that are tight, 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 tight. Jardash and Sassoon. Gloria Vanderbilt. <laughs> Say, what's your name, sister? I'm 36, 22, 36. And I got it all figured out. Who is the troublemaker? Who is the peace breaker that Shiloh has to come and take the scepter out of his hand? and give the scepter to a nation that will bring forth the fruits thereof. So it is written in the scripture that it is God's good pleasure to take the kingdom and give it to another. Who is it that the kingdom must be taken from? What kingdom is it that has to be seized by God? Because it has become a malignant cancer. In fact, the book of Revelations calls this nation a great whore nation. Says that it is filled with abomination. And that all of the nations of the earth have fornicated with the whore. And all of them have been found with disease. Who is this troublemaker? Who is this peace breaker that Shiloh has to come and take the scepter from them? And then bring forth a lawgiver that would establish law and order on the earth. And why don't we know who the peace breaker is? Why don't we know who the troublemaker is? Or do we really know and we're just afraid? Or do we really know and we're just asleep? Or do we really know, as the scripture says, and we're just dead? in addition to being scared. Who has gone all over the earth, as the book of Romans says, that there would be a people whose feet are swift to shed blood. Third chapter of Romans said, the way of peace have they not known. Says that destruction and misery are in their way. Who is it that disturbed the peace in Africa? Who is it that is now oppressing and holding captive millions of your and my black brothers and sisters in what is called the USA or the Union of South Africa? I wonder if there any coincidence that it is the USA and this is the USA. Who is it that went into Zimbabwe? Who is it that went into Namibia? Who is it that went into Ghana, Guinea, Northern Africa, Central Africa, Western Africa? Who is it that went into the islands of the Pacific and has the Koreans calling themselves Northern Korea, Southern Korea, North Vietnam, South Vietnam, East Berlin, West Berlin, Biafra, Nigeria, the Northern black man, and woman and the southern black man and woman the east coast black man and woman and the west coast black man and woman who is it that is the troublemaker and the peace breaker book says shiloh would have to come set this thing back in order how will shiloh look when he comes will he have blonde hair Will he look like the troublemaker? Will he look like the peace breaker? I don't want to answer any of these questions. I want to just raise the question. I want you to answer them. Will he have pale skin? Will he? 
The Bible describes Shiloh. Says that he would have hair like lamb's wool. Looks to me like a congregation of lamb-headed people. Don't worry about your brother. Got lamb's wool too. Cut it off this morning before I came. In fact, I cut my lamb's wool every two days. Comes back so strong, I can't wait more than two days. Have to hurry up and cut it. Because the lamb's wool is so strong. Books say it would have hair like lamb's wool. Feet would be like brass. Not any kind of brass, but brass burned in an oven. Shiloh would be a black man. Burnt feet. Can't imagine him with burnt feet and white hands. Can't imagine him with burnt feet and a white face. I just can't imagine that. I wonder where, church, did we get the pictures of the blonde-headed man whose hair looks nothing like lamb's wool. I wonder, did the same people who went into Iran give us the picture? I wonder, I wonder if the same people who landed and invaded Grenada gave us the picture. I wonder if the same people who dropped bombs on Vietnam gave us the picture. I wonder if it was the same people who dropped the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. I wonder if they are the same people who gave us the picture. I wonder. And I wonder if you wonder. The book says lamb's wool. Anything short of that, you shouldn't accept it. Book says fine brass burning in an oven. Anything short of that, you shouldn't accept it. But why can you accept a Shiloh or a Jesus who looks other than yourself? Because you and I have been made into a people who are robbed of our names, robbed of our language, robbed of our religion, robbed of our culture, robbed of our God. Robbed of our folkways, our mores, and our norms, we have even been robbed completely and thoroughly of a knowledge of self. So we hate ourselves. Angel food cake is white. Devil's food cake is black. You wear white to weddings and black to funerals. Talk to hate ourselves. Good guy always wears a white hat. Rides a white horse. Huh? Not good to lie. But if you must lie, it's all right if it's a little white lie. Now don't get your jaws tight with me. I'm just following the flow of the service. I heard you singing, glory, glory, hallelujah. I heard you saying that his truth. You don't mind Reverend Reed giving you his truth from the pulpit, do you? You don't mind hearing his truth this morning, do you? For Jesus says the truth will make you free. Don't you want to be free? Don't you want to be free? Well, it's only the truth that will make us free. Lies have us in bondage. Lies tie us up. Lies fix us up and mix us up. But the book says Shiloh would come. The Jesus that we are looking for the Christ that we are looking for is not to come from another people, but the Christ that we are looking for, his imminent return, and have 
think that he is coming will come from the ranks of the lowly black man and woman here in the hells of North America. The Jesus that you have been looking for is coming from you. The book says he would come from a virgin. Yes, it represents one thing, but on another plane, it represents something even higher than that. He would come to a virgin people, a people who have had no intercourse, no divine intercourse with Almighty God for the past 400 years, a people who would have been robbed so thoroughly of a knowledge of self until they would not have been imbued with the seed, the spiritual seed of truth and divine wisdom that only can come from God on high. So the scripture writers call them a virgin people. And this virgin people would give birth to a savior who would save the world. This virgin people would give birth to a messiah who would be the Messiah who would come to establish peace on the earth. This virgin people, my brother and my sister, represents you and it represents me. Shiloh is coming from you. But he's coming with anger. The book says he's coming with fire in his eyes, with a sword in his hand. 10,000 mighty saints coming with him. They're not coming to heal, coming to kill. Says when Shiloh comes, he would be like a man with white garments on, tramping and pressing grapes in the wine press alone. And the redness of the grapes like blood would be dripping from his garment. Blood dripping from his soul, wailing again and gnashing of teeth because they wouldn't be happy to see Shiloh when he comes. And the church is supposed to be the bride of the Christ when he returns. The bride is supposed to be making herself ready for Shiloh when Shiloh comes. Because they say no man, and I guess that means woman either, don't care what kind of watch you got, say you won't know the hour when Shiloh comes. Some say he might come in the midnight hour. But the way these white folks change in the time, you don't know when the midnight hour is. Now reason with me. Am I lying to you? No. What used to be midnight, is it midnight tonight? Uh, and you ain't got no guarantee that it's going to be midnight tomorrow. <laughs> huh? That's right. But I contend that it is already midnight. Uh. Dr. Martin Luther King says it's midnight in the social order. Yeah. Midnight in the political order. Uh. Midnight in the economic order, midnight in America, midnight in the world. It's midnight already, and the church, the bride, must be ready for the Christ on his return. Yes, he will come, and yes, we have been given a grace period, and to some degree, we are still in the grace period by his divine providence and by his divine mercy, but grace don't last always as trouble don't last always so we don't want to be like the five foolish virgins we're supposed to be trimming our lamps with oil meaning not just a kerosene lamp at home it'll be hard to find one today trimming your lamp with oil means to trim your mind trim your heart church Get your mind and your heart ready for the return of Shiloh, for the return of the Christ. Will he come in the spirit? Yes, but he's also coming 
in the flesh. He has to come in the flesh if he's got feet like fine brass that's been burned in the furnace. What spirit has burnt feet? What spirit has a hand to hold a bloody sword? Yes, there's a spirit behind the hand motivating the hand that holds the sword. And there's a spirit guiding the feet that are burnt feet. What kind of spirit has lamb's wool on its head? What kind of spirit has a head? Certainly the head has to have a spirit in the head. Certainly the body has to have a certain spirit in the body. But when he returns, he'll be a spirit, but he'll also be a man. And he will be a black man. You say, oh, I ain't ready for that. Maybe you aren't, and maybe God sensed that you weren't ready for it, so he wanted me to just pull your coat and rock your boat. <laughs> One writer says when Shiloh would come, he would come riding in the clouds come riding in the clouds. But he would dispel the clouds by the power of his word and the brightness of his being. He would come in the clouds because the clouds represent a world that is in a cloud of confusion. Every way saying and glorifying in their way saying, I am the way. I love Pastor Reed as he says, Get away with that from here. Leave that outside. Get away from the banner. Get away from the label. I'm African Methodist. I'm a black Muslim. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Christian. I'm Holy Roller. I'm Jehovah's Witness. I'm Sept Day Adventist. I'm Church of God under Christ. I'm Church of God over Christ. I'm church of God around Christ. I'm church of God in Christ. I'm church of God through Christ. No, we all fools. That's what it is. The label doesn't mean anything. It is not the banner. It is not the label. Reason with me, church. Reason with me, it's not the label, it's not the banner, but it's the principle, it's the divine principle and the spirit undergirding the label and behind the banner. Don't you know winos have more sense than us? Winos don't argue over the label. Winos want to know what the content, what's in the box. All the wine on wants to know is what is the content? What's in the bottle? You keep the label, give me the bottle. Yes, I'm a little hoarse, but the devil is not going to stop this today. The devil is busy everywhere. All I want is the bottle, the content, the principle, the spiritual essence. Because if we will get off of the branches of knowledge and go down the trunk of the tree of wisdom to the root that Almighty God has set for us, we will find at the root that there is a common denominator. We will find at the root that there is but one God. We will find at the root our commonality. We will find at the root our unity. We will find at the root that there are no artificial barriers, that it is all to be done away with. So the book says Shiloh would come riding in the clouds of confusion. He had to start with the clouds of confusion and with his word and with the brightness of his coming, he would dispel the darkness and 
the clouds of confusion would vanish away. Another writer says that Shiloh would come riding on a donkey. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's minister, Minister Louis Farrakhan, teaches us that the donkey doesn't represent just any old jackass, but it does represent a people that the world now calls a jackass people. Jesus riding on a donkey represents the black nation, the black man and black woman in America. When Shiloh would return, he would go to the doctor, but it would be seldom that he could find a doctor. He would go to a lawyer, and only a Bubakari would answer, and maybe one or two others. They wouldn't have time. He would go to the businessman and the businesswoman and the entrepreneur, but they wouldn't have time. He would go to the big niggas, the cigar smoking, hot knobbing <laughs> niggas, and they wouldn't have time. He would go to the politicians, and only Maxine and now Jesse and a few others would answer. He would go to every sector of the society, and they wouldn't have time. So the book says he would have to come riding in on a donkey. What is the donkey, Minister Farrakhan? Farrakhan says the donkey represents the unlearned masses of the black nation, represents the people that are despised and a rejected people. The donkey is a burden bearer would represent a people who are the burden bearers for white America. Represent a people who do day's work. Represent a people who now ain't doing too much work at all. Represent the downtrodden people. The people that are walked upon. The people that are spat on. The people that are criticized and vilified and maligned. A people that are the very dust of the earth. But God would make his man from the dust of the earth. He would dig into the dust and the people who are loose like dust. And from that people, Shiloh would rise up from the dust. From that people, Jesus the Christ would come up from the lowly people. So the book symbolically says, that Shiloh would be riding on the back of a donkey. But now there was also a colt in the story. Young, fast colt. Smart animal. But Jesus didn't have possession of the colt right away. So he sent his disciples to go and get the colt. He already had to unlearn the so-called dumb masses, the downtrodden and the burden bearers. He already had them with him. So he said there's a coat tied up somewhere. Who tied the coat up? Said there's a coat tied up. I want you to go and get that coat for me. And when you go to fetch the coat for me, if anybody asks you what you're doing, tell them that the master has need of the coat. Who is this coat? The coat that the book says would have to be fetched, as they say, or would have to be gotten for Jesus and brought to him. We are taught that the coat represents the intelligentsia of the black nation, huh. represents the skill and the learn. Some of you in this sanctuary today represent the fast, smart coat huh. that Jesus, the Messiah, that Shiloh would ride into Jerusalem. The Bible calls it not the old Jerusalem, but a new Jerusalem. Yeah. What is this place, Jerusalem? Jerusalem. Huh. And you hear us say, ah, Salam. Huh. Huh. Aleikum. Huh. You say, oh, I ain't saying that old strange week. Pastor Reed, I want to be the last. I ain't saying that. You better go in your book. 
You better open up your Bible. You better study your Bible. Because the place is called New Jerusalem. Go ahead. Not an old Jerusalem, but a new Jerusalem that would come down from heaven. And shadow would ride the donkey and the coat huh. to the whole center of the people into this new Jerusalem that would be set up from the people who are like the dust of the earth. Go ahead. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on. Jesus riding on a cloud. Jesus riding a donkey. Jesus riding a coat. Huh. When the coat and the donkey come together the peace breaker, the troublemaker, they don't have a chance. Uh, For it is the skilled of minds of the coat with the strong willed minds of the donkey. Uh, when the skilled and the strong willed come together with Shiloh, with Jesus the Christ, uh, then it's all over for a lawless world. Uh, it's all over for sinful, wicked, devil-worshipping, satanic world. For it is written in the scripture that we war not just against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. I wonder is the White House high enough for you this morning? Here a deceptive devil goes to the golf course in Georgia huh. under the pretense of playing golf. And while America is watching the World Series on television, huh. he gives the order and the command to go in and kill people who are not doing anything to America. What threat could Grenada be to America? Huh. And if America is a real human rights nation, why has not America entered in in the Philippines? Why has not America stopped the hand of, an, of Marcos? Because Marcos is in the hip pocket That's right. of America. Can't you see it? No troops in, Phil in the Philippines. No Marine Corps in the Philippines. No Army in the Philippines. No Navy in the Philippines. No killing of innocent people now in the Philippines when every kind of murder is happening. But Grenada, you've got to send in the troops. What a hypocritical government. That's right. Let me move just to the side for a second, but it all has to do with Shiloh coming and the ride of Jesus. Don't you know that Reverend Jesse Jackson, running for the presidency of the United States, and the slogan, run, Jesse, run, has something to do with ride, Jesus, ride. Don't you know that? In the editorial of the Final Call newspaper, it says, run, Jesse, run doesn't just mean run for the presidency. It doesn't mean run for some little jive political office. It means to millions of black men, women, and children, beaten down and hopeless, shine for us, Jesse. For you are our star. It means speak for us, Jesse. For you are our voice. It means demand for us, Jesse. For you know our needs. It means think for us, Jesse, for you are our collective brain. It means show us out of this misery by being a beacon on the hill, Jesse. It means be strong for us, Jesse. We need strength today. It means show me the show the world that we as a people can produce, for you are the fruit, Jesse of our 400 year labor and sojourn here in America. 
It means to black children that they can dream of a better tomorrow and push and push to make it happen. It means life where now there is death and hope where there is now despair. Run, Jesse, run. Means not only for the president, but run for the finish line so our agony will cease, so our tears can be wiped away, so our pride and our integrity and our self-respect can be redeemed and restored, so our muscles can be comforted and our feet can be cooled, for the road has been rough and the race has been long. Run, Jesse, run! Run for us, Jesse! And when you run, Jesse, we run right along by your side, brother. And maybe when we reach the finish line and when we push our black chest through the tape, we will have run past the white man's presidency all the way into a bright tomorrow where the sun shines down on a nation wherein we can truly enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Run, Jesse, run. You say, what does Jesse running have to do with Jesus riding? I say, you haven't read your book. For it was written of Jesus. When Jesus came, the book says they asked the question, can any good come out of Nazareth? How can this man that you call Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, he's not qualified to be a Messiah. He's not qualified to be the Savior. He comes from a broken home. He comes from a broken family. His daddy was not around with his mama, Mary. How can this man, Jesus, be a qualified man? Is that the question they ask, church? You know they ask that question. They say this man, Jesus, he's a powerless man. Huh? This man can't possibly be the one that we're looking for. Where is his power? Where is the source of his authority? But we say run, Jesse, run and ride on King Jesus. Ride on. For our life is like the life of Jesus. For most of us come from broken homes. We used to sing the song and we still do. Mother gone, father gone, the motherless child sees a hard time. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. We used to sit on the garret. You know what I'm talking about. Sit on the garret, sit on the porch, dipping snuff and two in the back of, rocking in the old rocking chair saying, child, trouble don't last always. Our life is wrapped up in the life of Jesus. That is why black people are imbued with the spirit and the love of Jesus. Because Jesus' history is our history. Jesus' life is our life. And when Jesus rides, we ride with Jesus. When Jesus rides into power over a lawless world and a wicked society, we ride into power with the master. He rides in on our back. We carry him to the heights of power. We become the saints of the most high God that it is written in the scripture that we would become the battle axes and the weapons of war that he would use to break down nations and destroy kingdoms. We ride with him. What qualification does Mondale have? How many of you know personally Walter Mondale? Raise your lying hands. <laughs> Raise your lying hands. How many of you personally know Walter Mondale? You don't know Walter. <laughs> Uh, 
How many of you personally know John Glenn? Raise your lion hand. Some of us can't get a ticket from here to San Diego, let alone out in space. How many of you know John Glenn? Well, I, 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 I still think that, that Jesse is really not qualified. He's a, he's a symbolic candidate. It's what they said about Jesus. Isn't that what they said? Don't you know how to take this Bible and relate it to your everyday life? Don't you know that the Bible is rich? The Bible is full of principles. The Bible is full of light and guidance that will give you light in your everyday life if you understand this book, church. John Glenn is no more qualified than Jesse Jackson. John Glenn is an astronaut. Everyday life, if you understand this book, church. John Glenn is no more qualified than Jesse Jackson. John Glenn is an astronaut. You just had a peanut farmer for a president. What? All right, now reason with me. What qualifications do peanut picking have for the president? I'm looking at some of your faces. You just as mad with me. Well, now Carter was my man. And personally, I'm voting for Walter Mondale. And I really don't think that there's no place for politics in the pulpit. If politics is not in the pulpit, where else is it going to be controlled from? If God is not in your politics, that is no wonder why the government is a sick government. <laughs> Pastor Reed is my friend, and he knows me not from the outside in, but he knows me from the inside out. And he knows that I'm not going to bite my tongue. He knows I'm not going to say to you what is expedient for the moment. And he knows I'm not going to say something to you that will make you come up and want to rub my bald head after it's over and say, oh, brother, you, oh, it was so wonderful. So nice what you had to say. I want to say that that will shake the seat and the bench that you sit on. I want to say that that will shake the very foundation that you have based your life on because you, church, are to be the bride of the Christ. Yeah. And he is called the Christ because Christ means the anointed one who comes to crush the rule of the wicked and to crystallize the people into oneness with God. Is that right? Yeah. Well, if Christ is the crusher, then we must begin crushing wickedness in our sin. If Christ is the crusher, we must begin crushing sin, evil, immorality, indecency that we have picked up from our sojourn here in this world among the peace breakers and the troublemakers of the world. Are you saying that the white people of America are the troublemakers? I most certainly am. <laughs> you wouldn't be here if some troublemaker hadn't brought you here. How do you think you got here? It was a troublemaker that came to Africa and killed our great, great, great grandparents killed our forebears and ancestors and put them in chains in the holes of ships and brought us across the Atlantic and brought us here to be burden bearers for white America. If that's not a troublemaker and a peace breaker, I don't know what it is. It was a troublemaker and a peace breaker that came and disturbed the society of the Red Indian murdered millions of Indians and now as the Indians selling moccasins and blankets on a reservation sleeping in teepees 
If that's not a troublemaker, I don't know what a troublemaker is. The book said Jesus spoke with authority. Do you speak with authority? Well, well. The book says Jesus spoke boldly. The book says when Jesus stepped and moved, the people could feel the power emanate from him. I wonder when you and I walk, can the people feel the power and the spirit emanate from us? I wonder when you and I walk, do they feel power or do they notice us tremble? Do they see our knees shaking and our teeth clattering? Brothers and sisters, as I close out, I say to you that this is the hour of Jesus' return. Sometimes I think we look for him so hard and so long until you really have given up the faith and you really don't believe that he's going to return and there's so much mixed up theology and doctrine until you quite can't quite get him in clear focus today. But I'm here to tell you from the representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Minister Louis Farrakhan, that Jesus Christ's return is imminent. That Jesus Christ's return is not a long way off. And you don't want to be caught looking in the white camp. You want to be caught looking in the right camp. Because you'll miss him as they missed him 2,000 years ago. You will miss him today. Remember, we have to reason together. We are brothers. We are sisters. If your pastor and I and our families, if we are one, if we find no dishonor in the AME and the Muslim coming together, some of you have heard me say before, and I say again, that Reverend Reed is one of the best Muslims I know, and I'm one of the best Christians that he knows. There's no dishonor. I'm officially a member of Ward AME. He's in the Nation of Islam, and so are you. He just knows it. Some of you don't. All right. So as we leave the church today, let us understand that we're living in very serious times, very perilous times. Irregular rain, snow, hail, earthquakes in diverse places. We in California live in one of the most serious earthquake zones in the world. We've got to be right. We don't know when the quake will strike. It's not a question of whether it will strike. The question is when. The book says God guides the feet of the righteous. Will your feet be guided? Will my feet be guided? The man Jesus that you say you are looking for, I am here to say to you that I have met that man. I have met that man and I have accepted him, a black man who is my personal savior and redeemer. I am learning him not from the outside in, but I am learning him from the inside out. And I am here to say that Minister Louis Farrakhan, a man that you will learn much more about in a few days, comes in his name and represents his divine grace and his divine mercy to you and I, because we don't need justice today, and you shouldn't cry for justice too loud, because justice means the reward for good and the punishment for evil. And some of us know that if we got justice, Holy Quran says there would not be left one living creature on the earth. So we don't want to cry so much for justice, 
We want mercy. And Minister Farrakhan represents the divine mercy of Almighty God. And he comes in the name of that Jesus that you are looking for. Comes in the name of that Shiloh that you are looking for. And we must gird up our loins. And mount up with wings as eagles. We have to run. Not just for presidency. But we have to run for our self-respect. Run for our self-determination. Run for our self-dignity. Run for unity and solidarity among our own kind. Black with black integration. Run, don't just run, but fly to your God for your life. This is a serious hour in which we have now arrived. Fly, black man. Fly, black woman. Transform your life by renewing your mind and your spirit and allow the Christ mind and consciousness to enter into your being and dwell within and emanate from you. This is your day, black man. This is your day, black woman. Pick up your beds and walk. Get up from your bed. Shallow, the divine power and grace of Shallow, Jesus the Christ, through their representative, Minister Louis Farrakhan, through that divine word, if you will listen the hand of the withered man can be healed. And a withered hand, people's hand can be healed. And you can build again for yourself. And your hand won't be withered anymore. A people who are of a leprosy colony, 50 to 70 million black leopards in America. Lepers in America. These of the black leprosy colony in America. Listen to the divine truth and the divine admonition, and the divine warning, and the divine word, and your white disease of leprosy, our white disease of leprosy, can be washed away, and we will no longer be a white-minded people. This is your day. Get up, Lazarus. Get up, Lazarine. Take the napkin from your eyes. I know you've been in the grave for days, representing 400 years, but stand up in the grave on the square. Make right angles and perpendiculars with the earth. Pull yourself up, black man. This is your day. Ride with Jesus. Ride with Shiloh. This is your day. And fly to your God because it is written that the stone that the builders rejected is now becoming the head stone of the corner. And it is the Lord's doing and it would be marvelous in our eyes and that he would take the kingdom from a people who are unworthy of having the kingdom. And the scepter would depart from them and a lawgiver would be born from between their feet. And Shiloh would come bright, brilliant, luminous, and I might add black. And we would be the saints that would go marching in with him because we have been taught that there's a great camp meeting in the promised land. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.